your host josh chapman and today we're in the home studio we're on the skype so we've got a returning friend and guest coming in he's he's, he's gonna wait till the midnight hour he's, he's we're basically in the worst possible time zones and he's been so accommodating so welcome back charlie ashby how you going mate hey so <laughs> that, that, that's the that, that's the response of a man who's uh who's burning the midnight oil I, I I don't even know what sleep is to be honest. <laughs> well, maybe I know sleep too spe- much. I've been sleep all day, and so why not just you know stay up? You went and did all those. You did three months of sleep deprivation training for celebration, and then at the last minute they announced a lottery, and it was all for nothing. Yeah, that was a that was a nice little thing. No, I couldn't. Do you know what? I just I couldn't. I don't think I could do that again. I mean, if they if they if there's no lottery next time which is very unlikely but if there was i i don't know if i could do a line if i had the other could guys you? maybe but i did it once and it was the worst thing <laughs> i have a feeling everybody like all the people i spoke to leading up struthers and whores and claire and yourself and and you know who had all done it were all a bit like yeah you know it's a it's a real you know you, you get there and it, it's okay and it's not so bad it's a real bonding thing and I know every one of them probably just was like, thank God I didn't have to do that. I f- yeah. I mean, I don't like still when everyone was like, it is an experience. And it is an experience if you have the right people around. And mm. if you don't, it's annoying. <laughs> and you're on, you're just even <laughs> the concrete floor. Um, yeah, but yeah, but we saw all these people anyway. We, we socialized with everybody just in a nice, a nicer environment. Oh, absolutely, yeah. At a bar. I mean, I'll take that over anything. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Could I mean, I couldn't imagine. Like, I don't, I don't know how I would have survived. Like, celebration. I didn't go too hard, too crazy many nights. We said we definitely had some late nights and a few drinks and things, but there wasn't stuff. You know, I was we were still up and about. We had the, we got into a lot of the early panels and stuff, so we were sort of up early getting down there. But I just couldn't imagine. Like, I was tired, still getting six or seven hours sleep a night. Yeah, we have. A, I think because we've become over from a different country, we have, time is a weird construct at celebration. I don't think time works mm. the same way. So no, because you're you're already messed up by the time you get there. Exactly. So when you have to put in this extra bit of effort to do this lining system, it's just you know a bit crazy. And I didn't even I didn't even go from another country. I, I, the last time I did the lining was in London. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> You're like, this is still too much. It's and I'm too... on Her Majesty's time. Exactly. It's like, okay, so picture this. You're going to sleep on the concrete floor just to get a wristband in the morning. Ta-da! I was like, yeah, this would be great. Not that far from where you live. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if I'd still been living, if I'd still been living in, if I'd still been living in London when Celebration London was on, I lived in Hackney in London Fields. I was about 20 minutes away from the convention centre, so I've been sleeping on a concrete floor like 20 minutes from my bed, <laughs> going, ah. Oh. This Rogue One pa- panel better be worth it. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, because I came from Islington. So that's what about the same sort of. Oh, right, yeah. About time. Pop on the tube and you're basically there. And um, mm. the funny thing was, yeah, the, the day I got back, it was like, because celebration ended like halfway through the day. Got back, w- got a lift home with my um, my great aunt, gave me a lift home, and I just fell asleep straight away because there's, it's just a weird. Time is so weird when you go to celebrations, even if it's a different country. More so, actually, I guess, because when we was at, we when we met each other for the, for the first time at, in person, mm. that was that was that was odd because we were both. <laughs> I don't know. How, we we both had not slept, but we were we were fine. Yeah, yeah. I, we were we were both sort of like I was on this sort of thing of adrenaline and tiredness and excitement and and I'd almost not gone to the cuz I'd been up longer than everybody else uh, Catherine and Andy and the other guys had been traveling around America for a few weeks I think before they got there or at least a week oh, wow. and I came straight from Melbourne and we landed um, and I met Catherine at the airport because she got in at a similar flight to me. We took a taxi to the Airbnb and stuff, and it was sort of late afternoon. And then Andy and Steph turned up, and um, you know, we sort of hung around. We got got our our bearings, and then we went round to the 
Echo Base where the bad motivators were and um, Brittany and Emily and a couple other people had uh, hung around there, which was great. And then they went, oh, we're going to go to this, you know, this bar in the city. There's more people going to be there. And I was just was going, oh, I don't know. <laughs> like I hadn't gotten my pass yet as well. And I was a bit like, oh, I'm going to have to get there early and get my pass. And uh, maybe I should go to bed. And then I just was like, what are you doing? Like, just go. <laughs> what are you going to just sit in bed thinking about the good time everybody else is having? So, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm so glad I did. But I remember seeing you there and just going, oh, hey, hey. Like, it was, you know, it's that weird thing of like, you know somebody, but you don't know them, but you instantly like go, oh, great. I think I, I, think I shoved the recorder or the microphone in your face within sort of five minutes of, uh, of, of you turning up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one of those cool little things. I think I got straight off the plane. Um, got into a taxi got to the hotel I had no like literally as soon as I got to the airport all my money went off my phone because it's like five pound a minute per data mm. which is ridiculous managed to finally get some free wi-fi to contact my buddy who was at the hotel who had already got there so at, th- at that point of time I didn't know which room I was in etc I was like just waiting there for no reason got up settled slightly came downstairs I hadn't eaten the whole flight because I'm weird with food and just I just rather just, I would have just slept the whole time so it was fine yeah. and then I was like okay I'll go to the bar I'm very awkward I've got anxiety so you know there's people that I know are there and so the first thing I do is to stand near the bar and don't <laughs> say anything the vibe. <laughs> <laughs> just look awkward as fuck basically and then <laughs> eventually go off and go hey everyone and then you realise that people <laughs> like you, and I'm like, okay, it's fine. Yeah, it's like cheers. Everyone goes, Charlie! And you're like, ah, oh, I want to go where everybody knows my name, and here I am. <laughs> <laughs> and then, basically, within about 20 minutes, I'm doing double shots of my law. Ugh, yeah. Which was an yeah. experience. Thanks, Claire. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Claire. Thanks for nothing, Claire. Um <laughs> Uh, yeah, look, it was it was awesome that night. It was really great icebreaker, you know. And I, I'm I'm quite lucky. I don't I don't have sort of any sort of anxiety issues meeting people and stuff. So I was quite happy to sort of throw myself in it and things. But um, it was it was crazy. It was like the internet had come to life basically, and um, it was a really good jumping off point because then it just meant you know the next day's a celebration. You know, we we sort of stuck close to the sort of the crew we came with at least initially just to get our bearings but you just sort of walk the floor and it's like oh there's charlie and claire give them a little high five as you walk past you know there's those people there's those people and yeah it was um it was um it was great and i can't wait to go go around and do it all again really but i'm, I'm glad to have the little break you, get, you know get excited about it again i think even oh, if yeah, it had been sure. exactly a year might have been a bit too close but uh um now i've just been sitting here i'm just going to touch on this very quickly Cool. Uh, at my desk, and I've been having a nice cup of tea. Now oh, we had okay. little little t- little tea tea wars yesterday, didn't we? <laughs> on, on online, this is what everyone tunes in for the tea wars. The basically uh, Nathan Hamill, who people would know as obviously Mark Hamill's son, who's an, an artist and quite active on social media and things, and he was posting something about how his English breakfast tea had, had run out, and um, he needed some more or, or something along those lines. And I chimed in and I said, you know. If you want to do tea properly, you've got, you've got to get the Yorkshire tea, the Yorkshire Gold, which is my, my my one, or even just the regular Yorkshire, you know. And then Charlie popped up popped up his head, and he he had a, a differing opinion. <laughs> uh, you what were you flying the flag for Tetley's? Was it? Was that what you were flying the flag for? I mean, I'm a Tetley man. <laughs> Everyone likes their brand, you know. Got to fly the flag, flag yeah. Got to fly the flag, yeah. It's with the Rolling Stones. I can't trust them because he doesn't smoke the same cigarettes as me. It's like I can't trust a man who doesn't drink the same tea. <laughs> um, and I know Chris Hall, uh, our friend artist Chris Hall. He, he's a big, he's a big Yorkshire gold man, Yorkshire man. So he he jumped in and he was flying the flag as well. So basically, I think we we basically very much confused Nathan Hamill, who was just making a comment about his tea, and all that all these British and half British people started chiming in with their favourite brands and how one was more superior to the other. Yeah, that was. I mean, he had it coming by just mentioning tea. You have to know that that's a British magnet. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. You know, flying it's, to it's, the it's nice to. It's nice for people to get passionate online about some things that you know aren't going to offend too many people. I don't think. You know, it's you know we haven't quite gotten to the tea wars yet. 
the, the lines of the families haven't been divided over tea yet. I mean, I'd argue that there was a pretty significant tea war. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, but there was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it may have ended up with, um, oh, what was that thing? America. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know. This is the, the second one was never quite as big. The sequel's never as big as the original, is it? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'd argue it's better though, because we're in it, so it's fine. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, how are you? How are you guys? I've been listening to, to obviously the Imperial Senate, and the, I always say the kids in the Imperial Senate because I'm an old guy, and you guys are young, young, bright-eyed podcasters and things. And um, how are you guys sort of dealing with the the lull of news at the moment? It's a proper lull, isn't it? It is a bit, yeah, which is kind of a godsend for us because we were all a bit busy. We were all a bit, you know, we had a, we had a summer break. Mm. Then we came back for a little bit, I think. Then we <coughs> sort of been off here and there doing bits and pieces. Um, but yeah, we should be back. This We're doing more episodes this week. We've got some of the, we've been doing the Patreon vlogs and stuff like that. We're trying to, you know, do more for that as well. So it's given us time to actually just, you know, lay back a little bit. So I'm, we're not too bothered by that we've got like a do you reckon it's going to be oh sorry mate no so we've got, we've got like a plethora of books that we need to go through some that i haven't even yes. begun to read so th- yeah i don't really go on the books so i just don't have time to read the book so it's this is actually when it's really good when podcasts like yourself and bad motivators and, and actually steals just started one with with king tom where he sort of it's i think steals in a similar position to me where it's young children you just don't have time to read books so he sort of explains <laughs> what happens in these books so i'm like oh great someone could just tell me what happens in you know thrawn and allegiance or whatever it is and i can just go oh okay that's cool good 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 for thrawn you know he's um He's popping up, but I mean, do you feel like that these, like going forward, you know, we're going to have this gap of no movies for like, is this the, these are the lulls we're just going to have from now on? We're just going to kind of have to accept these lulls. I I think so. I think that's actually a, a good point. I thought I sort of mentioned this recently about um, there was this whole Bloomberg article about um, Disney and the fact that younger generations apparently aren't interested in Star Wars, which. You know, it's clearly a clickbaity headline, and that's a whole discussion for another mm. time. But um, it did get me thinking a lot about how important the gaps are for Star Wars, and how I don't think a film per year necessarily helps the other films. Um, yep. Apart from like the difference between Rogue One being in the middle is that there's, there's a, I guess it's a different type of Star Wars film. But then again, like you had like Solo, yep. like how long? How long was Solo after Last Jedi? Like a few months, right? Five months, I think. Five months, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if 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 Solo had come out in December, and it probably would have done, you know, maybe a third to to double its money. No, I'm not. Maybe, maybe not, but likely just given that it wasn't sort of in that crowded thing, that seems to be the main reason it didn't do. Like this, they wouldn't be having this conversation. We, they would still be churning out these movies. Mm. You know, Solo Two would be on the slate. Um, it sort of that did sort of throw a monkey wrench in the operation, I think, of what they were planning to do because it did seem that they were really going to marvel it. They were going to just do one a year and maybe even even more. I, just yeah, for sure. And I think that's kind of the issue as well is that Star Wars isn't like Marvel. I don't think. I think there was an opportunity where they could have tried to have done that and I think that we witnessed it and I feel like we as an audience had the chance to react to that the same way Rogue One was a great it, film for me and I liked that little spin off but I don't know if mm. I just yeah I think the time period is but, a bit odd yeah but nothing is like Marvel you know pe- people try to replicate it and it's just a it's they've just played the long game and everything has just kind of worked out and it's you know it's a combination of you know, management and obviously having one person, Kevin Feige, sort of running it and casting and stories and, and happenstance and all these things that sort of that, that's created this thing. Like you can't, you can't force it. You know, like DC tried to force it and try, tried to catch up and then fell on their bum. And you know, even Star Wars tried to sort of oversaturate and they fell on their bum to a degree. It, it doesn't. I don't think it's something that you can just, yeah, force through. I think it just has to happen. No pun intended. But. um no, yeah. Yeah, I mean, talk about like. No, sorry. Um, talk about. You're hundred. You go, man. You're hundred percent spot on there because I think the difference is, like, once Marvel managed to get the Avengers out, and then they kept getting hit after hit after hit. 
people automatically assumed when I say people, I mean studios, not really real people. Um, <laughs> um, they they latched onto the idea of a shared universe, right? And yeah, I think the difference is context. I think Marvel does really well at having a shared universe and all these different films that interconnect and are woven in. And I feel like it's the same to an extent with the Netflix show, uh, The Defenders, that sort of arc, because these are based mm-hmm. on comic books, and comic books do that. They like the Avengers. Yeah. The Avengers book was just because the, they didn't have a book out at that time, and they figured, why don't we just put all the characters in one thing, and then we can tell the rest of the story separately, like we've done before. And that's what that's all they've done is do that on the films. It worked in the books. It worked on the screen. Whereas Star Wars isn't like that. And that's why no. it doesn't work. No, you shouldn't try to make it work either. I think it's, yeah. And that's funny they're talking about like, oh, you know, kids aren't interested in Star Wars and blah, blah, blah. But like, there's been plenty of gaps where Star Wars has been gone, you know, mm. humorous. And it always seems to bounce back and, and the hunger's still there. And <clears throat> And kids and adults latch on. I mean, I, I certainly saw plenty of kids who are into Star Wars. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not quite sure. I didn't read the article. Whether it, is that compared to what you know? Kids aren't compared to Fortnite or you know compared to to whatever else. I think it's just for kids. It's just another thing that's there. You know, some kids are gonna. It's gonna be their number one thing. But for other kids, it'll just be something that you know. It's like anything. You're like I was into Ninja Turtles for a while, and then I wasn't. <laughs> so. <laughs> You know, it's, it's it's there's always sort of stuff that comes and goes, but it's just there's just so much stuff now. I think it's hard to expect a kid to just latch on to to, to one thing. Yeah, I think that specific article was mainly a they didn't do it as good as we thought, which is such a stupid sort of you know jumping piece. It's like saying, oh yeah, we made millions of dollars, just not as much as we. <laughs> As they wanted to, so yeah. therefore it's a failure. It's one of those, you know, boohoo. I'm sure they're crying in their sleep. I'm sure Bob Iger is weeping, <laughs> wiping his <laughs> eyes with dollar bills. Yeah, with Disney dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you say do that as a joke, do, I mean, but in a few years... Do they do still do Disney dollars? I'm like, sure, in a few years, we'll all be using Disney dollars. Yeah, that will be the, the universal credit. <laughs> How like, many goofies have you the got? The gold standard is gone. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a goofy. <laughs> what? Damn, I sunk all my money into Bitcoin instead of Mickey dollars. Ah, oh, I lost the... my house. Oh my... <laughs> you owe it all to Mickey. Yeah, exactly. Oh, goodness me. Um, So, with Daddy D23 coming up, mm. like, what, what... I don't really get... D twenty three. It's it's like a Disney convention. What is it? Do you know what the twenty three in? Is it the twenty? Th- it's not the twenty third. Like next year, it's not D twenty four, is it? Like it's D twenty three every year. It's called. Yeah, isn't yeah, it? yeah. What is? Do you know what the twenty three stands for? Are they all Michael Jordan fans? <laughs> I think that yeah, that, that's exactly it. No, um, I think <laughs> uh, twenty three stands for nineteen twenty three because that's when Disney was made. Ah, uh, right. Yeah. Okay, that makes a bit more sense. <laughs> Not because it's um, my age, obviously. They, you know. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> well, again, they could change it every year as well, just to keep track with you. Yeah. Um, I'm always 23, though. So, so that's more of a... Um, so that that's kind of like an all-in, all everything that Disney's doing kind of thing, isn't it? And Star Wars is just a bit of it. So I think people who have been to D23 before are like, hey, yeah, we stood out all night for this panel and that was you know five minutes of star wars talk and the rest we had to sit through sort of mary poppins returns or something like that or i mean that's the dream isn't it (laughs) i don't know i saw that mary poppins returns movie it was it was fine but i completely forgot about it the second i I finished it so how dare you have you seen it yeah i watched it on the flight to uh celebration (laughs) All right, and you got there just like bugger Star Wars. I'm gonna talk some, you know, NPR. <laughs> Dude, I I weeped over that film. I was oh, crying really? on the plane. Yeah, I look, it was perfectly fine. I thought Emily Blunt was great, but I just <clears throat> the, the the songs didn't really grab me, and they just reminded me of the songs. Like I just wanted to hear the original songs. It's probably it it, it might actually be a, a better film just because. 
the original Mary Poppins is pretty clunky in places, but maybe that's unfair. I'd have to go. I just remember being really long, even for a kid's film. I feel like you're... The original... You're doing... Um, you know, I'm, I'm backtracking. You're the, you're the Star Wars... Uh, you're, you're like, why isn't this my Luke? My Mary Poppins. <laughs> my, not my Mary Poppins. <laughs> Hashtag Andrews not all my the way, Mary man. Poppins, yeah. <clears throat> that would have been funny if they'd just done Mary Poppins Returns. It was still Julie Andrews and the kids turn up and she's just on a, an island and she's just grumpy and she just refuses to help and <laughs> yeah. she doesn't want anything to do with it. It turns out that she she's responsible for one of the kids going bad and murdering all the other kids. And <laughs> wow. <laughs> What happened to Michael? <laughs> Yeah, like, well, I was standing above my bed and I pulled my my umbrella out for a second. I nearly stabbed him in the head with it, and then I I managed to you know restrain myself, but I felt ashamed. He joined so. the bank. <laughs> I packed up my stuff and I left. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, but I think Julie Andrews is still alive too. Actually, though, I, though I think yeah, um, she is. Yeah, though she must be. I, um, I think. She- she, I think she had some sort of operation. She can't sing anymore. Or she can't sing like she used to, which is um, it's similar to uh, Elton John. Actually, I didn't realize that Elton John had a big like uh, had a big operation years ago, and that's why his voice sounds different. I just watched Rocket Man the other day, I so mean, Elton yeah. John is you, on my brain. You should of always course. be on your brain. Yeah, well, I, you know, as soon as you watch the movie, and I thought it was great. Um, I thought the Tarrant Edgerton was was really good. Of course, then you fall in the rabbit hole and you start, you know, busting oh, yeah, out the soundtracks sure. and, you know, busting out the records and things. I liked, yeah, I like to sort of, you know, because I've always sort of had the hits so of Elton John. So I always like to go back and get, you know, like the the, the big albums and try to listen to them all the way through because there's always, you know, like seventy percent of it yeah. you don't know because you only know the hits and things. And yeah, pretty talented, get, pretty talented bloke that Elton. He'll get far, yeah, definitely. He'll he'll do good work. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm assuming D23. Getting back to D23, they'll show some more Mandalorian stuff, surely. Now, were you? Where were you for Mandalorian at Celebration? Did you, were you in the yeah, yeah, yeah. one-off room? The, um, Did you see anything? I'm just yeah. trying to remember. No, I was in, the, in the big room, not in the main room, but in, in the, the uh, I think the second biggest one, the, the runoff one. Yep. Yep. Now you didn't. I always ask people who were in those rooms, so you didn't start walking out, you know, when it thought it was all over. And John I mean, Favreau had to call it everybody would back. The biggest insult to John Favreau, who directed Iron Man, to leave before the final credits. So yeah, no, I. <laughs> you, I mean, it was clear it. that they were going to show something because. It was, yeah, I know. it was really weird because we were in the arena and, you know, they were sort of, you know, talking up and slightly looking like they were winding up. And they were just, you know, because you could see people sort of heading for the exits and stuff. Right? And I'm like, just, come on, there's, there's going to be more. Just, and I think there was still sort of five minutes to go on the times. I'm like, just, I just think hang in there. There'll be something. What was understandable is that for some reason, they, they, you know, he did that thing where he was like, that's the end of the panel. And it was like, okay, well, that's it. And then they mm. cut off. Well, actually, on the screen, they cut him off. So people were like, okay, it's finished then, so we'll leave. And oh, some people right. actually did leave. And then the screen popped back up again and was like, okay, psst, don't tell anyone, but we're going to do this thing. I was like, you don't have to cut off the screen for us, though, because we... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like, yeah, like, we're in on the strange, joke, man. But I'm not complaining. Well, it had happened because I think people who'd, who'd been out in the, in the concourse who were just watching sort of out on the floor... They cut for them, and I think there was a few oh, people. I mean, boo! if you've seen the, the gifts that I've made to um, my celebration journey, you've seen Claire's reaction to that. Oh uh, yeah, poor Claire. Yeah, I, I felt very bad for Claire because obviously she one she missed out on the panel, and then you know some stuff involving her favorite character was in there, and then people just sort of rubbing it in her face and stuff. So I, I have felt, to say, I felt I've never been her, but, scared. Um, I've never been you know, so scared in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving that like room, the Chicago side came out, and we were like, "Oh, I'm sure we'll make a quick joke about it." Claire, Claire won't have fifty people go up to her within about a few thirty seconds before we even meet her. I'm sure that's not going to happen. So by the time I we joked around, me mm. and Nikki laughing, that gif is literally the reaction of me filming it, and you can see the her her brain process it from. Okay. Okay, I'll be calm, and it's not absolutely not calm to basically saying what the fuck's going on, 
I'm so mad. And we, she got really angry. <laughs> and I was just staring at her like, I, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. She... <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. It, it's not fair, is it? It's, um, and it, it, it's, it, you know, the celebration is not the kind of place you want to be mad. Um, you know, I certainly um, <clears throat> stood behind a couple of people in lines, uh, you know, who are a bit more old school, who sort of complained about the good old days and things. Good I'm like, man. I don't want to be one of those guys. Um, but um, I think Claire had a little bit more grounds, especially when people just start coming up to you all the time. It's like, hey, you know that thing you love? <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. But good on her. She she bounced back pretty well, you know. So I don't know if that was a little bit of karma for the Merlot that she put she uh, she gave oh, maybe. everybody. But um, I'm sure that's not the case. Maybe oh, I don't know. It was pretty awful. But uh, I, don't, I don't I don't think that's a, that's a, a just punishment <laughs> if you ask me. Um, <laughs> uh, now let's talk episode nine. It's coming up. It's getting close. I can, you can feel it. Feel it in the air. Kind of. I don't know. It it doesn't feel like a real thing to me, really. I, I, I still it still feels very up in the air, very unknown. I mean, you're you're um, a spoiler guy, are you? I, I I think I'm pretty. I'm a see. I'm, just, I'm mumbling now. I think I think I am a spoiler. <laughs> you put guy, you on the spot, but not all, not all the way. But this film, I'm not Ooh. delving too much into it. When I do see stuff, I'm not like majorly. That's the always mm-hmm. the thing about episode seven, Rogue One, and all that stuff is that I looked for like on different websites and stuff, and had like an idea of where things were sort of going, and I I I don't think the major stuff has been spoiled for me, which is pretty cool. Even stuff like. So what was the sort well, of stuff? I mean, like episode like Luke's outfit in episode seven. I saw that before the film, but it. Okay. Yeah, I saw that photo. That photo that came out, I I, I did actually. I think yeah. that just ended up in a Twitter feed, and I saw it. But listen, it I wasn't like a. Out, oh though. well, that's the film ruined for me. Then it was. It was like a cool. Don't know any of the context around that. I didn't watch the film. He shows up. I was like, dope, awesome. So, <coughs> you know, it's the, it's those sort of yep. things. Yeah. Okay. So not sort of major major plot points or anything like that. Kind of, you know. I don't know. I don't think I spoke to anybody who... I think I've spoken to anybody who even sort of went to spoilers, who were kind of new, you know, in regards to something like Last Jedi, no. you know, what happened to Luke or, you know, Leia getting blown out of the window and um, I'm just trying to think of all the sort of major stuff that... I mean, there's so much stuff in that thing, you know, so, but where do you start? But, um, yeah, I mean, do you... <clears throat> what do you think in regards to episode nine? Do you think we're going to get a pretty safe... Is it, does, it, does it feel like from what you've seen so far, we're going to get a, a safe film? It looks a bit kind of like <clears throat> you see photos and stuff like like Klaus. You know, he's sort of he's getting his little moment in the sun on the online. If you don't know who he is, he's sort of this big sort of worm looking creature. I think we get some pretty. Wacky I think stuff it in depends there. on what you mean safe, because there's a lot of stuff which has been hinted at in the source material and in spoilers and such, which I think can be taken both ways. Now, either mm. are we allowed to talk about like major stuff, or I don't know if it's that major. I don't know if it's major. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, you talk about yeah, death like stuff, yeah, that's yeah, you know that's that's there, like that, or Palpatine, it's like, or it seems like they're trying to because it's the last film of the saga. There's a lot of like hints and callbacks to stuff like the Death Star is going to be in the film. Palpatine's going to be in the film. Um, yeah. I feel like some people might think that's a negative, but I'm not sure how I feel about that yet. I think it's a cool risk. I think it's nice to, you know, go back and look at all the stuff. It's the same reason why Revenge of the Sith, that moment at the end where you see Vader and Emperor um, on the Star Destroyer and watching the Death Star being built. It's awesome. Mm. <laughs> people be like, oh. Well, have you seen, have you seen those... Um those DVD covers that just came out, like they're re-releasing yeah. them on, on Blu-ray, all the movies on Blu-ray, and they've got they've done these, and, and they've got the the half-built Death Star on the cover yes, of the do, Re- yeah. Revenge of the Sith one. I've gone, gee, that's a interesting thing to put on there, I, considering it's in the film for 
you know, five seconds or something. But I, I guess if they're trying to, like, it's just interesting that that's a narrative that they've purposely put on these covers to advertise the films before Nine comes out, you know, with another Death Star. It's almost like, hey, here's a thing that keeps popping up. You know, if I think if you look at those, I see if I can find them. I think there's like a Death Star on almost every second cover book or something now. So hang on, let's see if I can... Um, let's just see if I can find these. All the Star Wars films re-releasing on Blu-ray. Where is the covers? Okay, so nothing on Phantom Menace, nothing on Attack of the Clones. Mm-hmm. Revenge of the Sith has got the Death Star on it. New Hope's got the Death Star on it. Nothing on Empire. Return of the Jedi's got the Death Star on it. Nothing on Force Awakens. Is there a Star Killer base? No. Then Last Jedi, then Rogue One's got one, nothing on Solo, and then obviously we don't know. So, yeah, that's it's on four or five of the covers of all the films. So it's, you know, <clears throat> doubling down on that Death Star. It's a snazzy design, man. What can you say? Gino's you in cheek. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, can't get away from it. <laughs> I put a little poll up. <laughs> Just when you think one's gone, they they bring you another one back. You know, bigger and better than the last. Oh, I love it. Do you know what? I will actually. I will. I will, I will laugh and like, with glee if JJ Abrams makes the third Death Star in Episode Nine. I will. People will hate it. But I love it. <laughs> I I was always I was always shocked to find out people didn't like the second Death Star. Yeah, I never had any problem with that. Like, yeah, I was going to ask you, like. Did you ever, ever have an issue with that? Because I, I know some people were like, "Ugh, such a lazy design choice." But I'm like, you know, if it works, no, I never one design flaw. No, I mean, I saw Jedi in the cinema as a kid when I was four, I think it was, and it was just accepted. It was like, all right, Death Star, we're doing, you know, of course they'd build another one. Why wouldn't you? It, you know, this time, and I just, I love, I love the half finished design as well. I still think that looks amazing. Oh, it's so, so good. Um. So yeah, growing up, Return of the Jedi was always my favorite opening and it still is it's my favorite opening of any star wars film i know people go but a new hope i'm like yes a new hope's awesome you, and it without that there would be no other ones but return the jedi that cut down to the death star mm. and that shot of tiderium shot of the star destroyer that is the best opening and i remember watching that for the first time and, and just thinking oh my god they've built another one <laughs> they've kind of done it again <laughs> <laughs> exactly like it wasn't the sense of oh Look at these silly fools. Like, I can't believe they've built another one. Don't they know they're going to blow it up again? It was a... We've seen the destruction and like the devastation that this thing can have on people. Yeah. This is much bigger. The Rebels, I didn't know if, it, we knew, I didn't know if they knew about it yet. Because you're watching it for the first time. It's like, oh my god, do they know? Like, this, is, this, is, this is bad. This is, this is awful. And... Um, it's just the coolest thing. Like, it actually made me feel like f- fear for the rebels and everything. Because it's like, okay, they might have got away with it the first time, but this is this is a, a risk. So, but if they if they do it a third time, I think it's hilarious. <laughs> um, a, do you know time. when they find out there's a second Death Star? I mean, obviously, there's nothing in canon now. Was it? Is that what was it happening in Shadows of the Empire? I know that's your favorite thing to talk about, Shadows of the Empire. <laughs> but <clears throat> is it, do they find out in that that there is a second Death Star? I don't, I don't know if... Because obviously they talk about like Both and Spires and blah, 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 blah. But that's more about like the Emperor is going to be there, all that kind of stuff. Like, I wonder what point they actually find out. Because it's not... There's only like a year between Empire and Jedi. I'm, I th- maybe they did. I'm, I'm sure... Sh- because I haven't read Shadows for a long time, but... I'm sure that, there was all these subplots, weren't there? There was all these like different subplots with like Vader and uh, I like to call him Seesaw because it yeah. makes me laugh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Prince Seesaw, um, Seesaw, he's up and down. Yeah, um, and there's the whole backstabbing plot thing going on there. I'm sure Palpatine's like you know. I'm, I'm I'm sure there was a mention of it, but I think in the new canon, I'm, I think. There's a Princess Leia book that's set during the gap between episode five and six, which I've never read, but I need to read it because it, I think it's the only major sort of canon book that deals with that time period, right? Yeah, I think so. I think it's called Moving Target. Um, well, but I'm not sure if they actually do mention. 
I know that it's something to do with finding Han, but I'm not sure if they find out in that book or not. Let me have a quick search. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the um, but obviously the comics at the moment, the Star Wars run, they've just done. Uh, they they basically take place between A New Hope and, and Empire Strikes Back, and um, they've just sort of pivoted to a new writer now and it's sort of leading it's the lead up to empire strikes back they're sort of getting ready to look for it to, for a hoth base and stuff and i i don't mind the comic but i've sort of said all along i don't really like that some of the adventures are bigger than the adventures they have in the films i kind of prefer the major stuff to happen happen in the film and <clears throat> at the moment in the comic it's like they're going off on these missions and like han and leia just keep going on, on these missions together and i don't know yeah. like it kind of feels like you know they fall in love in in empire and you know that's when they sort of it all happens and stuff it's kind of like uh it feels a bit weird that they're just spending all this time together and like this comet they're pretending to be newlyweds and they're doing all this this stuff and it's just like uh, i don't know it feels like that they should be more just sort of sitting around just sort of on the run more rather than going on these wacky adventures but i, I don't know no yeah i i, I get that i think when the book started, the 2015 book, when it was just starting stuff like them blowing up Imperial shipyards and stuff, that was cool. Yeah. I like how Vader was fighting Luke. Like, that doesn't really bother me, the fact that he, like, they had just, like, quasi battles and stuff. But it's the point where you get, like, a Stormtrooper elite soldier who can use a, who can use a lightsaber. Mm. There's a shot where they all, all the main heroes use a lightsaber. Lightsabers, like, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I know. I think so much you can push. I know a lot of people like that big um, prison break arc. I didn't yep. like that at all. Um, it just I, seemed a bit. I don't know. I it's just, just cut, uh, yeah. I just kind of wanted their lives to be a little bit more mundane between the films. That not. I, I I don't know. Maybe it's not fair to say that they should be doing all sort of stuff, but they should be doing things. But it just sort of seems like there's. Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose you want them to have, have adventures and stuff, but I kind of like. I, like I want the movies to be the 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 big per- turning points it just feels like a lot of it's sort of dancing around the things that happen in the films especially like luke leia and han's relationship it's like realistically all this time they're spending together and it, it's sort of you know the antagonism is the same as empire anyway you feel like like why all of a sudden would that moment be the moment it happens if there's all this sort of run up to it anyway but anyway you know i'm poking well, I holes feel, i feel like i don't have too much of a big problem with that because i feel like they have this like tension, and they know it, they like each other. But mm. the whole point in like Empire is that they're deny or she, she's denying it. Yeah, for sure. That's why Han is kind of angry at the beginning because he's you know he's trying to prod her a bit. He's like, well, that's true. He's kind of just like, hey, after all we've been through here, princess. Yeah, you know, he's like, oh, why would you miss me? Like he's trying to get her attention. Yeah. <laughs> he's not. Yeah, he's, he's he's not exactly subtle. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's very unsubtle. Um, he's literally like come on you want me to stay because of the way you feel about me exactly <laughs> like, yeah. ah, 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 ah. <laughs> she's like don't know what you're talking about see ya um, but there's, there's <laughs> some story arc moments which, it has to make sense that's the key thing for me yeah. it has to make sense contextually and like if Leia Han and stuff picked up a lightsaber why don't they just keep it <laughs> yeah if you're fighting the Empire yeah, I, I don't know I, don't like, moments, I like the idea that they're scarce there's these moments in the books, which the comics, which I really like. So there's the Rogue One arc. Now that is a perfect story for me because they go to a, they build on something that the new films introduced. It doesn't feel out of place. It adds to the films we've already had before. Mm. And then it sort of cements the idea about the Rogue Squadron, which I like because, it, you know, it's just a nice character moment and it adds to the legacy of these newer characters that we know and love and sort of blends that all in. Um, yep. Same with the Vader finding out that Luke is his son. It's such a powerful moment. Yeah, that's great. That's great. That's probably the best moment in all the comics. You know, I think that's the one a lot of people go back to. It's sort of played out very well and sort of sort of perfectly that he's sort of just like, oh, I've been fucked with. <laughs> Everybody's yeah. lied to me, you know. It's so well done and it's... And it, you, that moment's earned in the comic, whereas there's some other moments in the the run which isn't earned. And mm. now we have to rely on these. If we're going to do like a canon, which they've done, they've scrapped the old EU and stuff. You have to kind of rely on some of the stuff, and it's kind of like, well, 
I don't know if I would necessarily keep that in my own head of stuff happening. Maybe, you know, these are just stories as well, but whatever. By the way, I just I did a quick check. Um, that target uh, moving target book does include the finding out about the Death Star. Ah, there you go. So, yeah. I guess we have to read that book. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna check it back. I'm just like, well, maybe they'll put it in a comic eventually, and I'll just wait for you know, in, in three years' time when they're doing the Empire to Jedi fill in the gap comics, they'll you know they'll put it something in there. But um, you know, that's good. It's good they've got it kind of planned out. Yeah, that's it's sort of alarming how quickly they're they're filling these gaps now in these comics and and sort of plugging the holes and things. But I guess we've got that big sort of return to Jedi Force Awakens gap that they they can fill with whatever they want. You know. For you know, for thirty years of stuff basically, yeah, um, for sure, and that's all sort of legacy characters as well. So you'll kind of that. I think that's where a lot of the you know that's pretty much where you're going to get your Han, Leia, and Luke fix for the next twenty years. Will be popping that in there, whether it's comics or whether they do something animated or I don't know. Like that, there you see that. Have you seen that um that clip online, the deep fake of Bill Hader doing the Tom Cruise impression? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a few of them. I think the same guy does it They're, just with Bill Hader. It's really weird. It's really weird, but it's it's really... I kind of just go, oh, wow. Like, considering how kind of that Princess Leia didn't quite work in Rogue One, you're just like, they should have just hired that guy to, to, to do it. <laughs> um, but, I mean, you know, you could... Like, it's not that far off. You could get a bunch of people and just deep fake Mark Hamill, Return of the Jedi era Mark Hamill on. You know, if this guy's doing this in his in his basement on a couple of computers... And, you know, he's got six minutes of footage and it's um, it's amazing what they might be able to do soon. I mean, I don't know. Would you rather have a completely convincing deep fake Mark Hamill, Harry, Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher series or would you rather have a recast one if they were doing post-Jedi stories? I think animated stories would be really great for post-Return of the Jedi. Yep. Just because I feel like the style... Just, I mean, it's one. It's an easy escape because obviously Carrie is not with us anymore. Um, yeah, it, it does sort of avoid those sort of slightly touchy things, doesn't it? Like, is it if it's so convincing, but it's not really them? It just kind of looks like them. Yeah, and also Mark Hamill has had a, a great career in voice acting, so it'd be easier just to have him involved rather than just completely recast the character or get like I know a lot of people want Sebastian Stan. <laughs> To play Luke, and I'm like, Bored. how old Sebastian Stan? I wonder. I don't think. I think he might be. He must be in his mid to late thirties now. I don't know whether he's really, you know, because Luke's supposed to be what twenty five at the end of Return of the Jedi. I thought he was my age, twenty three. Right? Oh, actually, oh maybe it all comes back to twenty three. Oh no, he's okay. He's a little bit younger than I thought he was. He's eighty two, so he's thirty six. Yeah. Well, oh, 37. No, right. he was Romanian. Did you know he was born in Romania, Sebastian Stan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he... Um, I'm sure he's done like interviews before where he speaks Romanian. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Good on him. Of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool I didn't know. Thing. I've never looked up his Wikipedia page, but um, yeah, look, I, I think animated is certainly a way to go where you it's probably the less likely to, to have sort of awkward things of people who look exactly like the actors but it's not actually them you know sort of th- throws away those sort of slightly uncomfortable conversations that you have to have or you know whether you feel like you, you it's really the real thing also i feel like it's just a, a, a more of an interesting way of telling stories but then again yeah i feel like if you're going to do a post return of the jedi story it would have to focus on luke um finding because we know that based on this new book that's coming out soon that luke skywalker book which is something i'm so excited about um is this the one where he's sort of writing about the history of the jedi or something is is that what it is yeah and i think based on what i've read i I don't know if it's going to be confirmed i'm pretty sure luke's written this after he's dead which is i love that (laughs) you know i love (laughs) i love a good guy who you know but doesn't that sound like death get in the way? Well, I guess if you once you're dead, like what are you doing with your time? You know. Yeah, I like the idea of the publisher saying, "Well, when you uh, when you said ghost run, <laughs> <laughs> it's ghost rider. It's it's a literal ghost rider. Exactly. Yeah. 
So who wrote it? I did. <laughs> just, yeah, I'm a ghostwriter. I just dict- you can still hear my voice. I just get I dictate to Ray, and you know she sits there and she types it out for me. <laughs> or if anybody else who can who can hear me, you know that's it's easy, easily done. I got I got a whole stack of books. I'm going to write some detective novels after this. <laughs> Some I like the idea start that with the ending and I work backwards. I like the idea that Ray's on the Millennium Falcon writing this book, and her hand is like really tired. She's been up for like for like hours, and Luke's sitting there going, "Okay, okay, okay." And then Dooku got on the ship and ran away again. Okay, yeah, get this. <laughs> and she's like, "Oh, for God's sake! Can you at least get me some water?" And he's like, "Okay." And he gets up and bangs into a table and goes, "Ow!" And she's like, "Hang on a second. You can physically interact with stuff." And he's like, oh, no, the force needs me. <laughs> and just disappears. <laughs> gotta go. Gotta go. Gotta go. Uh, uh, I would just like that he's, he's regaling her like, the story of Star Wars. You know, and he's yeah. going, oh, and then, um, uh, and then uh, Qui-Gon you know, said that he, he'd train Anakin. And he's like, um, uh, Obi-Wan, what, what, what happened then? You, right. <laughs> so you, you were wrong. Yep. You weren't happy. And then... But he did it anyway. Okay, 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 okay. I got, I got, I got, I got. Sorry, I, I forget these things. I just, you know, I heard this yeah, story like, a long time ago. I'm trying to. He's like, <laughs> and then Obi Wan told me, blah blah blah. No, I didn't. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. This, I, this uh, is the, from the for the the pen of Luke Skywalker. Do you want to sit here all day and do this? You know, <laughs> I didn't. You guys be dead lot longer than me, and none of you wanted to do this. And I've come here, and I'm taking care of it. And like, uh, that does, uh, that does bring up, you know, the potential of my least favorite thing in closing stories. In closing series, when they have like the book of the story at the end, oh yeah, yeah, you know, like they did, yeah, like and it truly was a Star War, you know, and like <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, like uh, if they even consider doing that, if it, if, if Episode Nine ends with Ray penning the adventures of the Star Wars or the Skywalker saga in a nice little book or something, and it ends up on a shelf, uh, I will stand up and I will boo in that cinema at the end, no matter how satisfying that ending is before then. But that's what George wanted, right? Did he? Yeah. He, he always said that Star Wars films would be told by R2-D2 and Freepio at some point in the future. Oh, God. So it's so, going to be like them on a speaking tour, 3PO on a speaking tour, like doing the Journal of the Wills or something, and he's like up there telling these stories. And oh Well, I, I always pictured it as in he's doing what he does in Return of the Jedi. Like he, they travel around. Oh, yeah. And being like, it's just him talking about Rogue One, like, oh, uh, Jin, uh, is it a data bank? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you can speak English, mate. <laughs> you're, not on ta- you're not on Andorra anymore. Earth, um, mate. <laughs> yeah, this is Earth. We speak Earth here, mate. We speak basic here, mate. <laughs> um, I always did. I just have to go back because I was watching Return of the Jedi the other day. Um, I hadn't watched it in ages because I just get no time to watch anything. But I had a little window, and I was sort of nursing Sloane, my do- my little daughter, and I was like, oh, "I'll put Return of the Jedi on." Does three PO tell Star Wars out of sync, like out of order in that story? Because I feel like he tells, he gets to the Walkers before he gets to Luke blowing up the Death Star. Like I think he does it out of order. I'd have to go back and rewatch. I think he. But skips I have a feeling it. he cut. Co- he skips a bit. He kind of he sort of talks about. One thing, and then he kind of goes, oh, dun, dun, dun. And he's like talking about the walkers. And he talks about Luke going, ooh, blowing up. And then I'm assuming he's talking about blowing up the Death Star. But maybe he's talking about blowing up the walker. I think but it's like, the surely walker, that's not yeah. But is that important enough in the story? Like, surely you'd talk about blowing up the Death Star. I don't know. I mean, everyone's heard about it this, at this point, And they're scared about the other one in the sky. So he's like, look, we'll skip that. We don't want to scare the little kids. We'll just talk about, you know. <laughs> we'll just talk oh. about... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, Vader. <sighs> yeah. But he's, it's, definitely, you know, it's definitely in order, but you know, he just you know, artistic license. Yeah, perhaps. Well, you know, if he's anything like uh, Anthony Daniels, he'll he'll make sure he gets his words in. You know, he'll get a word in or not only speak. Could you him. imagine that? If Anthony Daniels is free PO, like if he could tell his story, they'd be here that all night. Oh yeah. It would just be uh, all the things that C-3PO did with us, some other people, <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> His memories keep going. He talks about the prequels. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, bless bless Anthony Daniels. I, I like, you know, I, I know some people get a bit sort of irked at the way he sort of goes about things, but I kind of like that he's sort of somewhat trolling people. And it's his it's his little moment every year, you know. Like, I know, especially now that it's getting to the end of 
his involvement, I suppose, if that is indeed what's going to happen. But um, I still think he's just lapping it up while he can. Oh, yeah, for sure. Although I expect him to be doing it forever. <laughs> yeah, it's not like he's not going to stop turning up at conventions and things. But, um, oh, look. Honestly, he'll be, you know, like I said, if they if they do the animated something, whatever, if there's an animated something that requires C-3PO, uh, I'm sure he'll get involved. I think he just doesn't want to be in that suit anymore. I can't blame him. I can't imagine how, yeah. Oh, I um, When we were at Celebration, I was around at the, the uh, Bad Motivator's house and there was someone, at, one of the guys had a Stormtrooper helmet just sort of lying this is what happens when you go to a stars convention there's just stormtrooper helmets lying around just on the table and i was like oh you know i've never actually worn a stormtrooper helmet before so i thought i'll give it a go i lasted about 20 seconds with that thing on my head it was so uncomfortable it's i don't know how people can walk around all day in the conventions with that stuff on i mean yeah it's a miracle i don't know i tried one as well and it's like jesus christ i'd love to have one but i don't know Mm. if i could wear it in the convention all day even no, just a normal, even just a normal outfit without a helmet on, it's like Jesus. There's so many layers and Oof. yeah. Well, they re- they reckon that's why the you know the Bob Fett cosplay is good because it's it's you can kind of bend. It's a bit lighter because it's sort of cloth underneath. You know, it's got some yeah. sort of bendy sectiony bits. But apparently, Stormtrooper stuff's just tough. Like it's just lots of very rigid, spiky plastics <laughs> and not very good for sitting around in and things. But um, yeah, look, I've never sort of. I've never really gone for the, the the cosplay stuff. It's not really my bag. It's just one more thing I'd have to, you know, carry with me. And yeah, I don't not that interested in doing that. But um, oh, you never know. Maybe episode nine, something will just jump out, and I've just got to got to have it, got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm still looking for a Watto cosplay, to be honest. <laughs> not enough Watto cosplayers. Oh man, that you, you did that. That would be yeah, that'd be the full prosthetic bodysuit, wouldn't it? Really? Imagine getting around Anaheim in thirty-five degree weather, in a you know in a silicon Watto suit. <laughs> just in de- no, just for daily life. Yeah, just for daily life, like convention. <laughs> <laughs> what convention? I've just, yeah, life on the bus. <laughs> Watto for life. Um, <laughs> So, leading up to nine, uh, before we sort of uh, wrap this up, what 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 do you usually do on a new Star Wars movie night? Are you got are you? I mean, obviously the the Nikki and and Claire, you know, you're not sort of geographically in the same place. It's probably a bit difficult to to do anything together. But um, do you sort of you get your family together, or do you have a couple of mates that you go to when a new Star Wars movie drops? Um, so I do the midnight uh, release. So usually. I down the view go. or the uh... down the view, of course, yes. Yeah, represent. Uh, <laughs> yep, <yeah>, definitely. <laughs> Especially because the prices have gone down dramatically, so that's that's always a bonus. Really? Yeah. How I'm much not... does it cost to go to a movie in Britain now in the UK? Uh, so if you do it online, I think one ticket. Well, they said that tickets are now four ninety nine. So what? Really? Yeah, well, pretty much. I think. Let me. I'll check now. It's it's around seven pound. I'd say. Now, you're say, not living in London anymore either, though, so that might be slightly. I think there's an overall yeah. thing. I think they've just really changed. Because oh, I was up. paying, yeah. I mean, I was always sort of paying about eight or nine. Oh yeah, I mean, sure. like if you went to if you went to something like Leicester Square, you'd pay twelve or thirteen pounds. But they, um, when I lived in in London in Hackney, they opened the Hackney. Did you ever go to the Hackney Picture House in Hackney? I don't. That know. might I've have opened been... after you left. I think. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it it's a I've ripping been, cinema. Yeah. And they opened it. It literally was across the road from my house. It was just like, it was made for me. Like, they just went, hey, we're going to build a cinema across the road from your house. It's I was like, oh, amazing. So I was a foundation member there. And you could go during the day when I was contracting. They have time off. I'd go during the day as a member. You know, before 1 p.m., you could go for sort of three or four pounds. So I would go see everything. But, yeah, I still remember, you know, if you went down to the the view in Islington or something like that or um, one of those cinemas, it'd sort of, yeah. 10 around about 10 pounds so mm, okay too bad. but yeah, um, yeah so if i wanted to go see a film tomorrow it would be according to this website online about five pounds right wow so you're gonna go down and see hobbs and shaw or uh, uh <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> <three four. laughs> whatever else is going all right so you do midnight do you do midnight with some mates or are you kind of just you're the only one who'll front up for midnight uh, some I think yeah. So my friend 
Bob, who is a is a cool dude. I think he's coming to celebration next year, so that'll be interesting. That'll be the first time I've actually had a friend who I know, like from the UK, go over, and um, that that's going to be interesting. I don't know. I feel bad if I don't hang out all the time, but I've got so much. You know what it's like. It's like you yeah, go crazy. So usually I hang yeah, out yeah. with him at midnight releases. I'm assuming it'll be the same this year. Um, but if not, it'll just probably be me by myself, which is not too bad because it's Star Wars, isn't it? Although it was hard. You can take it in. Episode 7, I went by myself. That was great. But my, my dad couldn't have the time to go to the right. film. Which meant I had to keep the fact that... I had that to sit on it. I had to keep the fact that Han was dead for months. Mm. And he came oh, for back. months. Yeah. Like I think it was like two months. Oh wow. Or like a month from the bit. And my dad came back from the film with my mum. They both went. And he was like This is the first the first time we ever actually said like this in a way. It was like it was it was strange, but like cool in this in a, in a sort of way. He was like, Thank you for not spoiling that. Oh. Like, You're <laughs> welcome. Nice. I was like, Could you imagine how hard it was <laughs> to keep that a secret? <laughs> Um, I had this really weird um, thing with my dad the other day. They came up and visited uh, my mum and dad. And um, one of the things I sort of inadvertently ended up talking to my mum and dad about is like, oh, you know, what are you watching on, what TV shows are you watching and stuff like that. And Mm. my parents have always sort of disliked commercial television, you know, when we were growing up and things and hated ads and stuff. So they they love the streaming revolution where they can just watch good stuff on streaming, you know, so mum particularly. You know, we're talking about this and this and this. And and I said, oh, you know, Stranger Things, did you watch Stranger Things? And I know mum and see it. And she's like, yeah, yeah, I'm watching it. And and she's like, oh, though your dad isn't really into it. And he just looked at her and he just goes, I hate it. Hated it, and I'm like, what? <laughs> How can you hate Stranger Things? Like, my dad never says he hates anything. You know, he's just like, oh, it wasn't for me or whatever. I just wasn't interested. Yeah. And he doesn't. He's not as much of a sort of. He's not really a, a, a huge consumer. Like, he watches movies and stuff, but he's not like a huge sort of media consumer and stuff. And he sort of he plays music, so a lot of the time he's got stuff on in the evenings. He'll have band practice, and mum will watch something. But the fact that he was so vitriolic towards Stranger <laughs> Things was so strange. Like, of all the things, I'm like, I'm like, you grew up in the '80s, and you know, you the music, and then he's just like, nah, he just wasn't having it at all. He did not, he did not jive Stranger Things. I'm like, all right, that seems a very strange place to plant your flag. But uh, okay, fair enough but um <laughs> you do you you do you yeah but they're pretty good they um they they've seen all the other star wars i think they've seen they definitely saw force awakens in the cinema i don't know about last jedi i think they watched it at home i have to i have to follow up i'm trying to get them on the podcast eventually but it's just you know yeah i'll get there <laughs> one day yeah. one day yeah one day it's been quite good at being able to sort of... I've got a pretty good system going at the moment, getting guests on. It's been a little bit easier, so I haven't had to sort of plug the depths for family members to get on, you know, when it's uh, two days before you've got to hit a deadline. There's nobody around you to talk Star Wars. But um, um, thanks for coming on, mate. Thanks for staying up late. I know it's it's late there in England and we're in the worst possible time zone things at the moment, which is, isn't great. Although it's great for the Premier League that's just started because the games are on about 9 p.m. here. But... Um, Give us a little talk up. So you, you spoke before about sort of stuff coming up for the Imperial Senate. Any other thing you want to sizzle before we head off? Well, considering that you just mentioned the Premier League, we do have a um, fantasy league for the Imperial mm, Senate podcast. Which I'm in. So if you like Star, uh, if you like Star Wars and like football, actual football, not the uh, uh, stupid American thing. Aussie Aussie rules football. You're talking about, of course. I'm oh yeah, that as well. That's a that. <laughs> no, that's a thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That I can't argue with you because reason. I love football, so, yeah. It's like you've got cricket. <laughs> you don't need anything else. Um, oh, yeah, Ashes tonight. I, I don't know how anyone can watch cricket. Oh, my God. <laughs> all right, that's all the time we have for it. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you like... Okay, no. Um, I need to find... Th- we, have a, we have a code. I'm trying to think what the code is. I know we've posted it before. Bear with it. It's me. on the socials. Just look up, look up Imperial Senate on Twitter. And the code's there, because that's where I got it from. So Yes, yeah, so the code is um, YLW051. So if you go onto the fantasy.premierleague.com, you can sign up to our league. And I think... Do you know where you are at the minute? 
Uh, uh, I think I'm sort of middle bottom. I think I actually had a reasonably good round. I think I think about seventy two points. But yeah, there's a few. Days. It's hard for me. It's really getting harder for me now because I've I've been out of the country. I've been out of the UK for sort of five years, five six years now. So I just don't know those players anymore. You know, like a lot of the yeah. players of I knew who's good at ball moved on. So I don't. Yeah. Yeah, you're doing good. We've got fifteen players. Uh, yeah, fifteen players, and your seventh. Oh, all right. I'll take that any day. Yeah. I'm, I'm literally day. one above you. Oh, all right. <laughs> all right. Well, risky, risky. The, the rivalry is on. The rivalry is on. Um, so, any other social stuff? You can where 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 they find you on the socials, Charlie? Uh, so I'm on Twitter at cmwashby, where I talk about why Disney shouldn't worry about fascists in terms of. <laughs> For some reason, they're annoyed about Jojo Rabbit. One, go see that film. Oh, is this the, the Taika Waititi one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah I just yeah. love, I love that they've just locked Taika Waititi into another Marvel stuff. And he's like, ink the deal. He's like, right, I'm just going to lock all that down and now I'm going to make the most bonkers stuff that I can. You know, now I mean, the deal's set. <laughs> it's just, he's a, just, he's a genius, that man. He's going, yeah, I want to make my bonkers little indie indiv- indiv- films. I'll just lock this Thor movie in so that's there. You know, all good. And then, um, yeah. That looks good. I mean, I love his earlier. I love what we do in the shadows and Eagle versus Shark and um, Hunt for the Wilder People. I think that's he's he's brilliant. So yeah, a thousand percent. And I was just tweeting earlier because apparently Disney are annoyed about um, his anti-Nazi film being too edgy. So which is weird to me considering you know Disney had a few anti-fascist stuff in the phase where it's like. Come on, I think I, f- I yeah. think we can be a bit more bold in this new era. But um, again, if you want to hear me moaning, I'm British. We'll see. So. It's all hearsay. It's it's all hearsay. <laughs> if you want to hear Charlie moaning, check, check him on Twitter. Um, you can catch our stuff at StarWarsSpeltOut.com. dot um, We've got all the t shirts and stuff on T Public. Thanks to everybody who's bought the t shirts. I've been posting photos of people who've been buying the mashup tees, which has been awesome. Footy season's only got about five more weeks to go, but you know you can wear them in the summer. It doesn't matter. They're fashionable all year round. Um, yeah, thanks a lot, mate, for coming on. When the time zones get a bit more uh, friendly, we'll, we'll get you back on again, you know, so it's not the middle of the night. Yeah, I mean, I'm not doing anything at the minute, <laughs> so if you need to have me on every week, I'll be there. Um, even if you need me, someone crying in the corner, you can just record that for a little bit and put it in the background. Love it. <laughs> thank you for having me on it's been a while since I've recorded anything so I know it's been too long practice. been too long great alright um, thanks everyone for listening and we'll see you soon <laughs>